Hello friends, welcome you again to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Anil Nasinghe, Assistant Professor in the Department of Microbiology, Yogeshwari Mahavidyala Amba Jogai. Friends, before moving towards the lecture, I would like to request you, if you like my video, please share it. If you like my video, please subscribe it and share it with your friends. And don't forget to press the bell icon. Friends, today I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting topic, that is notobiotic animal. So what is notobiotic animal? Notobiotic animal is an animal in which only certain known strains of microorganisms are present. It is also referred to as a germ-free animal. The status of their microbial communities, it is known to us. So that is what referred to as a notobiotic animal. Notobiotic, it is derived from the Greek word that is notos means well known and bios means life. So friends, how can we establish uh, a notobiotic animal? And uh, for scientists who were working on the notobiotic animals, there was a question that what would happen if an animal lived its life completely without microorganisms? So by 1959, scientists, researchers, they were rearing germ-free animals. So how can we establish a germ-free animal? Establishing a germ-free animal, it begins with a cesarean section on pregnant female mother. It is, the operation is conducted, it is performed strictly under a sterile condition. One uh, must uh, remove young animal from the mother's womb and then that procedure it has to be performed through a careful sterile surgical process without exposing to the microorganism present in the mother's body. Then the animal is, uh, the newborn animal is transferred to other germ-free sterile isolator in which all the uh, food and water and everything is sterilized to avoid contamination with microorganisms. Then, the germ-free animals, they are hand-fed formula that is uh, resembling its mother's, week, mother's milk for several weeks. Then, on weekly basis, a technician will come he will collect the swab from the cages, from the waste material, and he will examine it to ensure that there is no bacterial contamination. Once a notobiotic animal is established, then a normal mating among themselves maintains a germ-free colony, and it becomes easier to rear new germ-free animals. Establishment of a germ-free colony it is much easier with chickens and other birds than with mammals. The procedure is performed by James Serenus in 1928 at the University of Notre Dame. Firstly, the sterile, the fertile eggs is taken from the birds and it is firstly sterilized with a germicide. Then it is placed in a separate germ-free isolator. When the chick hatches and it is able to feed by itself. Then, to make ensure that no bacteria are present or there is no bacterial contamination, then periodic bacteriological examination is done to make sure that whether the microorganisms are present or not then no microorganism should be present. The human fetus in utero is sterile, meaning it is free from microorganisms. And within hours after birth, it acquires a normal microbiota. And that will get its composition, get stabilized within one to two weeks. From then, an enormous number of microorganisms, they become associated with our human body. The human body is home to trillions of bacteria, millions of bacteria. And 
the human body it lives in symbiosis with trillions of bacteria. In, in 1897, Louis Pasteur, he suggested that animals could not live in the absence of microorganisms. F attempts were made between the year 1899 and 1908 to grow germ-free chickens, but it had limited success because the birds died within one to two months. It is believed that the intestinal bacteria, they are essential for the adequate nutrition and health of the animal. In the year 1912, scientists were successful in growing the germ-free chickens. And the, they were found to be as healthy as the normal birds when they, are, when they were fed an adequate diet. Once an autobiotic colony is created, it becomes much easier to rear new germ-free animals. A germ-free mother can give rise birth naturally to her newborn without exposing to the microorganisms. Then, friends, why it is essential to study notobiotic animals? And what are the different characteristics that will differentiate the notobiotic animal from that of the healthy animal. So the notobiotic animals, they have a poorly developed immune system. They have a thin intestinal wall. They have low titer of antibody. And their heart, their lungs, their lymph nodes, their reproductive system, and their metabolism is altered. In a story, found that that a germ-free animal show altered pattern of brain development and behavior. Then it has been also found that a notobiotic animal they require high amounts of vitamin K and B complexes. In normal animals, vitamin K is normally synthesized by E. coli which is present in our intestine. In a story, it was found that if the sample of gut microbiome from an obese man were put into the mouse, the mouse would gain weight. And if the sample of gut microbiome was taken from a lean man and it was put into mice, there was no weight gain occur. So, from this we can see that how these uh, bacteria, they are having effect on the health of that particular animals. These notobiotic animals, they are only superficially normal. Notobiotic animal is susceptible to pathogens. As the normal protective microbiota it is absent in the notobiotic animal. So foreign and exotic microorganism, they get established readily and much easily within the notobiotic animals. And the number of microorganisms which are essential to cause the infection and produce a disease state that is also much smaller. So in this way, we can see that the notobiotic animal, that is the germ-free animals, they are more susceptible to different pathogens, whereas the normal animals, they are resistant to different infections. And the researchers, they have realized that an organism's microbiome, it helps us to digest its food. And in this way, notobiotic animals, they are found to be very important. So why it is essential to study the notobiotic animals? So, by using the notobiotic animals, we can compare the germ-free animals with that of the normally raised one. Then, we can study by using the notobiotic animal. It is possible to study the interaction between the microorganisms and the germ-free animal. Then it is also possible to introduce one or more microorganisms into the germ-free animals 
or we can introduce a single kind of microorganisms into the germ-free animals and we can study the effect of that organisms onto the germ-free animal or we can even introduce a mixture of microorganisms into the germ-free animal and we can study the effect of these microorganisms on health of that animals. So that's why it is found to be very essential. Then these notobiotic animals, they provide a key tool in studying the interaction between the normal microbiota and the notobiotic animal or the germ-free animals. So in this way, these notobiotic animals, they are found to be very much essential. Thank you.